day so far. If you're here for the first service, I want to welcome you back. I got a whole different message for you. So we're going we're gonna to keep this ship rolling. But if this is your first service for the day, I want to welcome you to Victor H. Hawaiian Islands. And uh, this is a church for you. This is your church. This is your house. And it's just exciting and a blessing to be here. Pastor Tony and Sister Veto are amazing pastors. Come on, put your hands together for your pastors here. Thank you for all your love. <laughs> your pastor's funny, man. He's one, of my, he's, he's one of my good, good friends, close friends. And honestly, he's, he brings joy being around him and his wife. And we're excited to spend the week with you guys. We'll be here all the way till next Saturday. My family's flying out tomorrow. My little girls are excited. It's going to be the first time here as well. So... We're excited to be with the family. Come on, put your hands together one more time for Jesus. And you may be seated here this morning. You guys have talent, so much talent. I was like, I just want to hear them rap all morning, you know. Everybody, I told, I told Matt, I go, man, they're, I go, man, they're bad. He's all, which one? I was like, all of them. She, do they have a manager? No. <laughs> Yeah, no, you guys are such uh, a talent, ch talented church. We're not just a talented church, but this anointed church. The difference is you can feel it, not just, not just here, but you can feel it in the music. You can feel it amongst the people, and it's just amazing to see what God is doing here. I have a message here this morning. First service, we dealt with uh, praise, how uh, we praise in the storm. But this message, I, I really want you to focus on the purpose of your life. Um, the purpose of what God's calling you to do. I'm, I'm a big dreamer. Are there any big dreamers here with me? Uh, from where I come from, not too many people were successful. Not too many people were able to get out the neighborhood. Not too many people were able to make something of themselves. And what I do today is something that I couldn't dreamed of when I was young. Uh, I didn't go to college, but I'm a big believer in college. But God's able to use our lives to open up a few businesses. I have a marketing business I do. I have a sports apparel line that I do. Uh, I grew up playing baseball. I wanted to play baseball. Uh, methamphetamine took that dream away, flushed it down the toilet. No. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I made it to a, a, a junior college team. I quit school, couldn't press forward with that. But then I was telling uh, the guys yesterday how, how it's crazy how God will always give you the desires of your heart. Um, years later, 10 years later after being saved, I opened up a sports apparel line called Speed Kills. Uh, we have athletes that wear our stuff. Actually, one of my friends, he plays for the Nationals. Uh, his team's going to go to the playoffs uh, this coming week. His name's Adam Eaton. Uh, he plays right field for the Nationals, and hopefully they win because it's a one-game playoff, and then they'll go play the Dodgers. They'll play the Dodgers in the first uh, series of the playoffs. I have another friend named Billy Hamilton. He plays for the Atlanta Braves. He's a center fielder for the Atlanta Braves. He's, his team's in the playoffs. I have a friend named Dee Gordon. He plays for uh, the Mariners right now. He used to play for the Dodgers, plays for the Mariners. Uh, my friend Nick Treveso plays for the Reds, and it's crazy how – is first started off with a small dream, you know, or is first started off with a big dream, but then it had to start somewhere. You see, it's okay to have a big dream, but you got to start small. You know, and I, I believe even for us, how sometimes we look at where we come from and we say, well, that can't be me. Well, I said that a lot. Well, it couldn't be me. I can't, I can't be somebody who does a bit. I didn't even go to business school and I'm opening up business. In two weeks, we're going to open up our own uh, business for writing music. Uh, we're going to open up our own line, our, our own record company, and eventually we're going to have our own studio so that we can produce our own music. So uh, I, I dream big. I'm a big dreamer. Why? Because I believe that if God's with us, then we can do all things. Right. You know, so it doesn't matter where you come from, what background you come from. As long as you put God priority, God can do something great for your life. But it ha you have to start somewhere. And in James 2, chapter, chapter 2, verse 26, it says, Faith without works is dead. You see, I've been able to talk to a lot of people, young people, ministry workers, church leaders in my time of ministry, and, and they all knew what, to, what it was to burn plows. What burn plows means is that you, you, you burn your past off. You, you forget what you used to be. So burning plows means is that you're not going to do the work of your former self. And to set out and live for God, but they didn't know what to do next. 
They prayed, they made a commitment, and then they got stuck. You ever been stuck before? And as a leader and pastor, I've seen over the years, again and again, me, myself, trying to live for God, I experienced this. I know I'm not the only one here who made some type of resolution and commitment and start doing something or to stop something. I know many of us, we, we try to do diets. I don't know about you, but I try every diet, you know, I try every diet. And it's, the diet always beats me, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I love pizza. I love donuts. I have a, man, donuts are the devil, you know, I I love donuts. I love chocolate. Pastor Tony was he was on a what, like thirty second uh, sweets thing right now, like three seconds. He said he's gonna stop doing sweets, and three seconds later he says, you know, I'm I'm gonna still do sweets. <laughs> and that is happening right now. But a lot of us we 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 want we have the good intention to start something, but then we don't finish it. You know, uh, some of us, you know, are, are the thing that we stopped was drinking and smoking or un, even having unhealthy relationships or even stopping the thing where we like to gossip or get involved in people's business. But two major reasons why well-intentioned people like us get stuck after we burn our plows is we don't think big enough and we don't start small enough. We don't think big enough and we don't start small enough. Thinking big and starting small enough are the two sides of the same coin. So I don't want just to motivate you today to dream bigger for your life, but I also want to challenge you to take realistic steps of obedience that can actually make God's vision for your life come to pass. You see, it's one thing to dream it, but then you got to start it. It starts somewhere. Tell your neighbor to start somewhere. Come on, say it like you believe it. Say it starts somewhere. Because some of you here today are going to open up your own businesses. Some of you today are going to help people get out of debt. Some of you today are going to go back to school. Some of you today are going to be the first to graduate of college. Some of you today are going to be the first to open up a business. And, and I, 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 I throw seeds into our congregations that we will have millionaires in our church. And some of you are like, I can't, I can't even be a thousandaire. I can't even be a, one, uh, a hundredaire. No. <laughs> yeah, some of you. God will use you. To do the impossible, which you think is impossible, who says God can give you a God-given idea? God, a God-given idea where you change the way we do uh, electronics or you change, you, you, you develop an app or, or you develop a, a, a company where now you're, you're feeding the vision, now you're feeding. Because a lot of times people think that answering the call of God is only ministry. It's not. Is that a, bad to say? Doing ministry is doing what God's called you to do because it benefits the house. I, I just opened up a construction company with my friend. I call him Builder Joe, and I signed, a, uh, I signed with him to be a, a, an investor with him, uh, and he's straight for the men's home. Heroin addict, been saved a year. He's a builder. Guy knows how to build foundations, build walls, all that stuff. And he, say, he shared his dream with me, and I said, okay, why don't, why don't we go and do it right now? Start enrolling in contractor's license. Let's, let's get this thing rolling. He said, well, I don't. Well, I said, well, me and you will do it then. If you can't do it alone, I'm going to dream with you. I'm going to invest with you because I believe that you're going to be a millionaire in my church one day. So we started off the steps in putting him in position to have his dreams become a reality. Some of you had a dream, but you let the devil take it away. You let the devil take it away because you consider yourself that you won't be able to be the one that does that. Your situation, maybe you may have had some kids young, and you're like, well, I can't go back to school. Yes, you can. We have people that are in our church. They're single moms. One of them has four kids. It's hard for her. She works a job, but she's going to graduate GCU this next year. Come on, now that's an accomplishment for a single mother. But who says that can't be you? Who says you can't have the same job for five years and be promoted instead of being the employee to now be the one who does the hiring? Who says you can't be a boss? Who says you can't get out of debt? Who says you can't own properties? Who says this church can't buy a big, bigger building? Hello? And who says God can't use you to do it? I had a dream when I was young to, to be the biggest giver in my church. And how can you do that getting <laughs> full-time ministry salary? I don't know about you. I was getting 50 bucks a week. <laughs> and my phone paid. That's it. I got my phone so I could answer it. And I was getting $50 a week. <laughs> Oh, Pastor, I'm buying you a phone so you can answer my phone calls. <laughs> and you get 50 bucks a week. 
But my dream started off small. I said, okay, then I'm going to do some side jobs on the weekend whenever I had time. And I was giving out of that. And then eventually it came to where now, now we have a few businesses that we run. Now we have a, and it's funny because a lot of people think it's like real big, like my sports apparel line. Like I, I talked to some athletes last week. I went to I take my daughters to baseball games. I love that they love baseball because I have three girls. I don't have no boys. I have three girls, but they're going to learn how to shoot a gun. They're going to learn how to fish. They're going to love baseball, you know. And I have a lot of guns. I know, I know it's different here. I, I, I own 11 guns, and uh, they're going to learn how to shoot all of them. We're, we're from Arizona, so it's different, you know. But last week, I was able to take them to a baseball game. I met with six different baseball players there that are going to wear our stuff. And it's funny because they think that we're some big company, and it's not. It's me, the printer, and my garage, you know. And uh, they're calling me, sir. Now I feel a little older now. They're like, yes, yeah, sir, you know. What, what can I take? You want to go eat, sir? I'm like, I'm, I'm Israel, you know. I'm not a sir yet, you know. And, uh, but it's funny because people's perception of you, too, it's not just what, what you do, but it's how you look. And I, I know that when we go do our presentations to him, God's with us. So he shows favor. So even some of you are going to walk into some businesses and God's going to show you favor on your life. And doors are going to open up for you that you never thought would have been open. If you would have went by yourself, it probably would have been stayed closed. But because God is with you, doors will open up for you in your life and opportunities. How many can say amen? I'm trying to get you to dream bigger. I'm trying to get you past the state that you're in right now. Where he's saying, well, it can't happen for me. Well, it happened for them. Well, it happened for somebody else, but not me. No, God wants something to happen for you. How many can say amen? amen. Come on, some of you got to clap your hands if you really believe that. You see, I, I sometimes think that some of us don't think big enough about who God is and what he wants to do in our lives. In Ephesians 3.20, it says, our God is able to do immeasurably more than what we could ask for or even imagine. That, that tells me a lot about who our God is. Why? Because if we don't have the capabilities or the talents to do it, then he gets all the glory. If we can't say, well, I did this on my own, then he's getting glory for him using our lives in this area of, uh, of ministry. I don't, I don't play music, and I'm not a good singer. I ain't going to lie to you. I'll probably sound like a country artist if I try to sing. And, and, and what's, what's crazy is God's using us to write worship music. God's using our messages to write songs that we believe a lot of people are going to sing. And I believe even for you that you may not have the talent and ability in the area, but God's giving you the mind for that ministry. And God's going to use you, how many can say amen, to do greater things than you can ever imagine. You see, our God is a provider. Our God is a promise keeper. Our God is a sustainer. Our God is our fortress and strong tower. And our God is our healer. In our church, we're praying for miracles. It's crazy. The last two years, we've been laying hands on the sick. And we had people of cancer get healed in our church. We had people of hepatitis C get healed in our church. We had people of cirrhosis of the liver get healed in our church. And just recently, somebody with HIV got healed in our church. How many can say amen? You see, our God is a great God, and he's alive today. But some of you guys got to think a little bit bigger of who God is. He's more than just your bill payer. He's more than just getting your health back. There's a lot more to God that he wants you to find out, to believe that God wants to use you. You see, what are you dreaming for? Because God wants us to dream big. If I were to ask you here this morning, which I'm going to ask a few of you, I may not know a little personally about you, but I, I want to get to know you through what you're dreaming for. Why? Because if you're dreaming for something, we believe that it's going to happen. Like for me, I, I believe there's been words spoken over my life that we're going to have businesses that are million-dollar businesses. I believe that. And I believe that we're going to give a lot, and we're going to help support a lot, and we're just going to be, we're going to be a, a, a wallet to the kingdom of God. That's what I believe. That was spoken over my life, and I believe it because I'm doing a lot of things I shouldn't be doing. I'm involved in a lot of things that I, not, not, not saying, not brother, you're saying, no, no. I'm talking about businesses. I shouldn't be doing businesses. Bro, I knew it. I knew it, man. No, I'm not involved in that. But I, I don't have the credentials, or I shouldn't have the keys, but God has given me them. And some of you have dreams that need to be unlocked here this morning. But what are you dreaming, or do you even have a dream? Or has the devil took away everything? You have life, but you're not fulfilled. You have life, but you don't have purpose. Why well, I don't find myself fitting in? Because there's something that needs to wake up. There's something there that God has created you. You're not just here to get oxygen. 
You're not just here to fill a seat. There's a purpose behind why you're in this house. How many can say amen? I want you to ask yourself that question. What are you dreaming for? Take a moment. Think about it. What are you dreaming for? My brother in the green shirt, what are you dreaming for? What's your name for? I want to, I want to get to know you. Your name's Matt. Okay, Matt, what are you dreaming for? To serve God. To be faithful. Are you in the home? Yeah. What, what lifestyle do you come from? Uh, drug addict. Drug addict. Okay. So that was, honestly, that was my first dream. You want to know my first dream? It's crazy. I go, I don't want to do drugs. I, and I thought I was going to be an usher. I, go, I, want, I, I did do ushering, but I, go, I want to be a good usher. Cause I, I want to be like a security guard type thing. That was my, that was my dream. I want to be Sonny's bodyguard when I first got saved. Like, my thing was to be Pastor Sonny's bodyguard and driver. So I, that's what I wanted to do when I first started. And then, uh, and then the other thing was to marry a beautiful wife. You know, so that was my dream. That was my big dream. God gave me a lot more than that. But it first started off with that. Like, I just want to stay clean. You know, so that's a good dream. And then God will give you more dreams as you, as you continue to serve God and continue to connect. You know, but that's a good dream, Matt. Let's put our hands together for Matt here this morning. Dude, you're one of my favorite singers now. Z? Z? What's your, what's your, what's your dream, man? Financially free. Debt free. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. Put your hands together for that. Come on now. Big man. What's your dream? Take the city. So it, it, what do you feel that's a, that your, your role is going to be in taking the city? There it is. You feel called to be a pastor. Brother in blue, piano player, what do you, what do you, what's your dream? What's your name? Linton. Linton. What's your dream, Linton? Designer. Graphic designer. Do you do graphics now? You're practicing. You do graphics for the church? You, you, want, you want to know something funny? That was my first job. You, know, you want to know why I learned graphics? Because I didn't want my dad paying nobody to design their own flyers. Not knowing that with that mentality, when I started graphic, because I still do graphic design, I do my marketing company. But I started graphic design to be a blessing to the church. And because I kept the purity and being a blessing to the church, God opened the doors to design for big businesses, real estate companies, even like our international world conferences and all that. But it first started off because I wanted to fulfill a need for the church. And I never charged the church. Even to this day, I still design for the church. Never, everything... Pastor Tony goes, I need eight flyers done by tomorrow. I'm going to do those eight flyers, you know. Even in the position I'm in, I'll still get all that done. Why? Because that's the purity. But because it's pure into the ministry, there's an overflow that happens. And when the overflow happens, I know it's because of the purity and why I do what I do with graphic design. It first started off by, I started playing around, you know, with Photoshop. And then 15 years later, I have a, bit, a marketing businesses because of it. And it all started off with the idea that I wanted to be a blessing to the church. So I started off exactly where you're at in, in business would be graphic design. So that's cool, man. Do you do video? A little bit? Well, you'll learn video. Because if you do graphics, you're going to learn video. It all comes together. But come on, let's put our hands together for Linton. Your pastor designs too. A little bit. <laughs> Who else? What's your, you're a rapper, huh? <laughs> What's your dream? What's your name? Puni. To help build the church. A big church. Come on now. I like that. Big church. What, what, do, you, what do you do right now in the church? Intercessory and, and connecting. Okay, cool. So you, you help with the connecting with all the new people and everything? Cool. What do you feel God's called you to do? I guess pastor, I mean, I'm not a pastor, but I should be like, you know, whatever God allows me to do. Amen. So you have the heartbeat to be a pastor.
Come on now. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Come on now. I like that. And your wife. Would you, you feel that same thing? Be a pastor's wife? You guys do ministry great together. You know, so I would go to your church. <laughs> but drink, drink, big dreams, you have to start small. They have to be somewhere. Because if you don't start small and you only see the dream as a success, then, you'll, then it's always easier to see failure because you don't see the immediate success of it, coming to hap of it happening. So you got to start with short-term goals. And I, I believe that when you learn how to win, tell your neighbor, win. Come on, say it loud. Say win. When you learn how to win, winning gets addictive. Winning is attractive. And, and I believe God wants to teach you how to win here this morning. He said, it says, if God is your partner, make your dreams big. But it's going to take a lot more than just dreaming to see them to come to reality. You see, we don't simply attain greater things by lying on the couch and concentrating on the possibilities of a better life. You see, we have to be willing to think big. Tell you never think big. But the active ingredient for God's greater work through us is our willingness to start small. To start small. If you can't start small, whatever big you're dreaming about is never going to happen. You see, a, a young boy grew up in a good home who made wrong choices. His environment got the best of him. His story had a chapter that never seemed like it would end. He was drug addicted. He was hopeless and he had no way out. He was a junkie who couldn't dream past the needle. Even with having run-ins with the law, being locked up, it looked like it would never shake his demon. Then one day, grace found him. Through a man who never stopped believing that God's word was true. Three miracles aligned on a day. A country boy, a drug addict, and a gang member found themselves under one roof praising a king who never forgot his promises. This story is so interesting because who would have thought that through a small prayer of a godly woman, the relentless pursuit of a young preacher, and the brotherhood that will last a lifetime, that this young man was set up by God to change the world. This young man is our founder, Pastor Sonny Argonzoni. We can put our hands together for that. Through seeking God and the guidance of godly men, he fought for a dream. To reach the most hurting people of the world. He went to Bible college and started off a small church in East L.A. You see, big dreams start small. I couldn't imagine when, when he began to look for a building and, and, and he found a real estate agent where the realtor thought that, that he was giving the keys to, to just a, a young ambitious man who was going to make a difference in East L.A. I don't think he imagined that when he opened up that door there in East L.A., that that same door that was opened up was not just opened up for East L.A., but Pastor Sonny was opening up the door to the world, that the world would be reached through a big dream. How many could say hey, amen? That that big dream started small there on Glass Street, but now we are all over the world. How many can say amen? Some of you got to clap your hands because from East L.A., we started going out to, to New York and started going out to, to Amsterdam, and then we went to Arizona, Chicago, and even Hawaii where we have churches all over the world. Who would have thought through Glass Street by itself that years later would have hundreds of churches all throughout the world? The big dream of Victory Arch International started small there on Glass Street. A humble building, humble small church, and look where we're at now. We're about to have World Conference next year, my friend. Over 20,000 people from all over the world. Some of you got to clap because that promise included you. Some of you got to shout hallelujah because that key included you. Did it come easy? No. But what he didn't realize that opening the door to that small church through the obedience of the call of God that he placed on his life would be opening up the inner cities of the world. Through that turn of a key opened up for us here in Hawaii. The dream that Hawaii will be reached for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. That God will bring a couple here. A couple that's not native to this land. But will have a heart of this native land. And believe that natives from here in Hawaii will get saved with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But not only that, I don't know if you heard, but this man wants to start a church. This man wants to be a pastor. He wants to be a pastor. He wants to open up a business. He wants to stop being doing drugs. Come on, that's something good to, to clap about here this morning. 
You see, faith isn't a state of mind, it's a course of action. Faith is work. Tell your neighbor, work. Come on, say it loud. Say work. work. You see, Elijah had the ability to trust God for bigger things than anyone around him dared to believe. In 2 Kings chapter 3, I want to get you with the story real quick and then we're going to close. But Elijah had the ability to trust God for bigger things than anyone around him dared to believe. He looked at every obstacle as an opportunity to prove that God is greater than the confines of any situation. You see, Elijah just didn't believe it. He did something about it. Miracles of the divine results of small steps of faith-filled preparation. Human action always prepares the way for supernatural power. In 2 Kings chapter 3, we run into a story of, uh, of the children of Israel being attacked. And they had to ask their neighbors, what can you do to help me? It says King Joram was ruling over Israel when the kingdom was divided between the north and the south. The king of Moab, they, they begin to rebel, and, and Joham began to ask for help. So he asked help from Judah, and he asked help from Edom. And with all three combined, they should have been able to defeat their enemy. But they were one, running out of a, a key element that was going to help keep them alive, and that was water. Tell your neighbor, water. Come on, say it loud, say water. You guys will never run out of water here. In Arizona, we have the possibility of running out of water. So three armies came together, and they're like, hey, we're going to join, we're going to lock forces, and we're going to defeat this enemy. In camp, these guys got thirsty, and they drank all the water. So, so what happened was they're facing a dangerous enemy while facing another dangerous threat, dying of thirst, and not having the right energy to go into war. So, so King Jeroham was actually looking for a solution, but he wasn't desperate for God. A lot of times when we get our back against the wall, we're looking for an answer, but our answer is never in the desperation posture of asking God for help. I want to, I want to change, but then we don't go to God for change. I want a breakthrough, but we don't go to God for a breakthrough. It's crazy about this story in 2 Kings is how, how when, when, they, when they said, okay, uh, I, 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 I'm, I want an answer, but I'm not desperate. I want my husband to be saved, but I'm not desperate in my prayer. I want my kids to stop doing drugs, but I'm not desperate. You see, a lot of times it's, it's those prayers that we tend to forget where we hope they're answered the first time so we don't have to keep fighting for them. But then not fighting for them doesn't re really require faith. And it's in those faith moments where God answers those prayers and all of a sudden now we see God as he should be and the greatest thing that ever happened to us. But I believe here this morning that a lot of our dreams are going to wake up. Tell your neighbor, wake up. Come on, say it loud. Say, wake up. You see, what happened was, is these three kings said, we're looking for somebody that is connected with God. They had to look for an outside connection. And in verse 14, it's funny how they rolled up to him. They rolled up to him in their, in their best chariots and, and, and their best outfits and their best things. And, and they were trying to impress the man that was connected with heaven. And he says, look, I'm not really impressed with how you come because I, got an, I have an answer for you that you're not really going to like. In verse 15, the armies were in despair and they wanted to answer. But it's funny how the first thing the man of God asked for was for a harp. I, I love this part because in, in greatest desperation, they they're, they're had the feeling that they were going to die. And the man, man of God says, get me a harp. I have an answer, but we need to connect with heaven first. You see, a lot of times in our desperate situations, the first thing we throw out is worship. Why? Because we figure that, well, I don't really need to worship. I really don't need to go to the house. I really don't need a connection. So I'm just looking for an answer. I'm just looking for an easy way out. I'm just look, I'm, I, I don't care about worship. Just give me my word. But you can't get a word without worship. Worship is the, the opening of the door to the word that you need. Why? Because if your heart is not pure in worship, then your heart won't be ready to receive a word. Because the word may not be the word you want. But if you're in the posture of worship, it'll be the word that you receive. Are you understanding me here this morning? Some of you, God has been speaking to you and you feel like it's not the thing that you need to hear. You feel, I don't, I don't want to hear that. But it's the thing that is necessary for your change. It's the thing that will actually get you through your dry season. It's the thing that will actually bring you out of your valley. It's the very thing that may actually be the thing that you've been praying for, and it's an answered prayer, but because we're in the flesh and we're not worshiping, it's the very thing that we, we say, you know, I'm not going to receive that. 
You say, well, God, speak to me, and he wants to use your leader, but you don't answer his phone calls. Hello. <laughs> or you don't respond to their text messages. Then you go back to, God, ah, I've been waiting. He's like, I've been sending. I've been waiting for this change. I brought that, your iron right next to you. And you don't like him around because all he brings up is God. I'm, he's your reminder to me. But you don't invite him over to lunch. Hello. He hasn't been to your house in months. And you're asking for answered prayer and I'm giving the delivery, but you're not accepting it. You're not signing off for it. And that's what's happening here in this moment there in 2 Kings. The armies wanted an answer, but they didn't want a harp. They wanted a word, but they didn't want to worship. You see, but when worship began to happen and they begin to submit under worship, the word began to flow. Turn never flow. Come on, say it loud. Say flow. And it's funny because they got their answer. They said, well, we're thirsty. And then the prophet says, well, water's coming. Water's coming. On the for There's water in your forecast. But here's some shovels. Go dig. They didn't really understand that. He said, well, if the water's coming, why do we have to dig? And he says, go dig in the dark. And when you wake up in the morning, those, whatever you've dug in the night will have the results in the morning when the sun comes out. You see, a lot of us, we want the, 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 the favor of rain. But if we're not digging in the night, in the morning, we'll just have a puddle. But if you dig in the night, you have your reservoir of favor. You see, see, God is bringing the rain, but it's up to you how much you're going to contain. See, some people want favor, but they don't want to put work to get their favor. Some people want, want blessing, but they don't want to put in work to get their blessing. See, some of us, we're, we're so used to asking, but we're not used to digging. But today is the day to dig. How many can say amen? Come on, how many can say amen? Come on, how many can say amen? Some of you need to wake up and fight for your breakthrough. Fight for what God's called you to do. Say, you know what? I don't care. Give me that shovel. I know if God said the rain is coming, then the rain is coming. It may not be when I want it, but if I keep digging, when it does come, I'll be able to contain a lot of it. But why would anybody dig ditches when the rain is not in the forecast? Because that's the way faith works. When you know God has promised you greater things, you won't wait for a sign to appear for you to respond. He said, dig, and there was no clouds. He said, dig, and there was no wind. He said, why are we digging? Because the rain that's coming will be the favor that you're able to contain. If God, it, it is as if God says, if you really believe I'm going to do what I told you I was going to do, get busy. Tell your neighbor, get busy. Come on, say it loud. Say, get busy. It's like God saying, show me your faith and I'll show you my faithfulness. Do your part. If you do what I ask you to do, I will be faithful to my word. He said, if you dig ditches, I'll bring the rain. There's nothing like digging at night. I don't know if you ever dug at night. I was a tweaker, so I dug at night. <laughs> Fixed cars at night. Changed oil at night. Changed I did everything at night. But when you dig in the night, you don't really see the results right away. You don't see what you're doing. You can't see the full effect of what you're doing when you're digging. And that's why some people don't dig. Because they don't see success right away. They don't see fruit right away. But they don't understand that when they're dug digging, when the rain comes, their work will be the result of what they contain. You see, it's nothing like digging at night or digging when no one is around. It's hard to dig when you're by yourself. Have you ever had to dig a, a, a hole by yourself? None of you guys? None of you guys? <laughs> Some of you, I dug by myself. It was for the wrong reasons. No. <laughs> we, 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 it's not like digging, because when you dig by yourself, you don't get the applause. Or, oh, good job. Oh, man, man, you, you been, man, you've been praying in the praying closet. Good job. We don't get the pats on the back when we're doing things by ourselves. Oh, you read that? Good job. You read the Bible. Good job. That's the digging in the night. Digging when no one is around. Digging when you can't see progress. We all want something great until we have to start digging. We all want the reservoir without the digging of the reservoir. We all want the well without the digging of the well. We all want the resource without the digging to, com to actually contain the resource. And some of you here today, you're going to put your first 
dig in the ground, your first uh, shovel in the ground, and you're going to start on the process of digging your well, digging for your dream, digging for what God's called you to do. And I'm telling you, God's going to open up the floodgates of heaven for Victory Outreach Hawaii. How many can say amen? My friend, you will be a powerhouse financially. My brother will get out of debt and buy his first home. How many can say amen? Come on, how many can say amen? Because that's not just going to happen for him, but it's going to happen for you. How many can say amen? Some of us are going to get out of debt this year because we're going to stop going to McDonald's. Hello. You know how much money I save by not going out to eat compared to how much money I spend by going out to eat? And I like to eat fancy. Even though I'm from the hood, I like to eat fancy sometimes. I get, I'm a cheap date sometimes. Like, I like to make chickens, you know, $1.50. You know, we had one last night, you know. But I also like teppanyaki grills where they cook in front of you and they throw a broccoli up and you have to catch it, you know. I like sushi. I ain't gonna lie, I like sushi. It gets a little expensive sometimes. But if we're trying to get out of debt, there's some things we have to cut out so that we can see the blessing. So when we pass up on something, we dig. We don't see it, but we're digging favor. We're digging responsibility. We're digging, we're, we're, we're digging for our future. We may not see the results immediately or, or, or get the, the gratification of having a sushi roll, hello. But then we won't be in debt a year from now. We'll have the freedom to be big givers. We'll have the freedom to finishing our pledges. We'll have the freedom to, to buy our car, cash, hello. We'll have the freedom to be the lender and not the borrower. How many can say amen? We'll have the freedom to say, you know what, pastor, I, I love doing that to my pastor. Saying, pastor, whenever my pastor goes out with me, he never has to pay for anything. I love being that for my pastor. I love, uh, even my dad, like I take him to base, I go, dad, don't worry about it. I, I love being able to do those things for these men of God in my life where they don't ever have to worry when I'm around. But the only reason why I'm able to be that way is because I, I learned how to say no to certain things. So my, my, my favor is able to go a little deeper. My, my wallet's able to go a little deeper. My blessing's to able to be a little deeper. Why? Because God honors that when you take care of your leaders. How many can say amen? Come on, how many can say amen? Where you're able to say, God, you're pouring out this favor, not just for me, but for all those around me. You see, rain is God's specialty. But God has assigned a part for you in that reign. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, is the evidence of things not seen. Can you dig when you don't see it or feel it? When there's no clouds or no, no wind? It can be a lonely challenge to face, but when no one supports you or endorses you or tells you that you're doing the right thing. But God is with you. Tell your neighbor, God is with you. Come on, say it loud. Say, God is with you. When everything seems too far-fetched and the enemies continue attacking, it's getting harder to keep our faith. But you got to understand this. We come from a ministry where our ministry started small, but now we're making an impact all over the world. How many can say amen? Come on, some of you got to shout because that dream included you. When you didn't see it, God was thinking about you. When you didn't feel it, God was thinking about you. When Pastor Sonny wanted to give up, he was thinking about you. Why? Because he understood that it, it wasn't just a small thing, but it was a big thing that was about to happen. And this church, a big thing's about to happen. How many could say amen? There's going to be an overflow from this church. How many could say amen? Not just for your music, but for your finances as well. God's going to use many of you to build up businesses and employ people from the men home and the women's home to start them off on careers to be a blessing financially to buy homes uh, our men's home we just paid it off in february complete we our, our men's home houses 55 men for the last three years it's been jam-packed we actually send our men somewhere else because we can't fit them no more it has 17 bedrooms in a front house we bought it we paid it off we did our appraisal now it's worth six hundred and seventy five thousand dollars and now we're looking for our women's home to buy a ranch for our women's home. And, and, and it first started off as a small dream. And all of a sudden we begin to, to build and to really say, okay, there's something bigger. Who says you can't have another home? Who says you can't open up another women's home? Who says you can't buy a ministry house? Who, say, who says you can't make these investments? Because that's how big our God is. But if you can't see that for yourself, you're not going to be able to dream that for somebody else. I know my God can take care of us. I know our God can get a bigger building. How many can say amen? I know God will, I have a, I have a promise for you. God gave me this promise, but I'm going to pass it over to you guys. 
David, he built, the, he built God's kingdom. And he was building God's kingdom, and God says, okay, David, because you're building my kingdom, I'm going to send somebody your way to build your house. And what he did is he got the, the king that was right next to David that was seeing what David was doing. And the king says, okay, I'm going to send my best builders, my best resources, I'm going to give him my best timber, I'm going to give him my best metals. So he says, I'm, because you're taking care of my kingdom, I'm sending people to build your house. And because you've been taking care of Hawaii, God's going to bring people to this church that are going to help build this house. How many can say amen? The resources are on their way. Rain is on its way. How many can say amen? Come on, some of you got to clap your hands. Somebody got to shout hallelujah because God's going to bring the right people in this right time, in this right season to build a base church here in the Hawaiian Islands. Not just for Hawaiian Islands, but for the South Pacific. Not just for the South Pacific, but to make a mark all throughout the world. That's how God's going to use this church. Worship and the overflow of wealth. The overflow of wealth. Not giving out of your lack, but giving out of your much. Not giving out of your lack. Because we can always be a good brother and give out of our lack. Like, I don't really got it, but I'm going to give it to you. You're not going to be that. You're going to give out of your prosperity. How many can say amen? Come on, some of you got to clap your hands because I believe that with you. Come on, some of you got to shout hallelujah because I'm talking to your wallet. Come on, some of you got to shout hallelujah because I'm talking to your bank account. Come on, somebody got to shout praise the Lord because I'm talking about you getting out of debt. Come on, somebody got to shout hallelujah because I'm talking about your blessing. The rain is coming. Tap your neighbor. Say the rain's coming. Come on, slap them. Say the rain's coming. Come on, tell the tell person you thought of second. Tell them the rain's coming. The rain is coming. Worship team, make your way. The rain is coming. But you got to start small. You got to dream big. Start small. Dream big. These soldiers, they went out, they dug, and they made a big enough reservoir to hold them over to get through the war. They dug enough to get them through. And not only did they dig enough to get them through, but it said that those same things that they dig actually helped the people that resided thereafter. Imagine that. That they thought they were digging for the night, but they're actually digging for their legacy. Some of you think all the hard work is for now? No. It's for your future. I work hard for my babies. It's funny because me and Pastor Tony share the same dream. When I pass away and all my hard work, I want to hand them keys to houses. Hand them keys to buildings. Hand them keys to businesses. It may have been my pain, but it's their promise. I can't expect them to go through my pain when it's their promise. I was the one that was chosen to endure so that they may be blessed. I can't wait for that day when they say, Daddy, thank you for this house. Thank you for this car. You know what's crazy? A few years ago, my dad, his car broke down. I was able to give my dad one of my cars. You know how good how that felt? I was like, Dad, here, take it. He's like, what? Like, I can borrow it? He even asked for it. His car just needed some mechanic repairs. He said, Dad, take it. He's like, you serious? Tears in his eyes. I said, Dad, you've been too good to me to not be a blessing to you. And if it's just extra for me, then I'm giving out of my much. Because God has been good to me. Yeah, I had failure finances. Come on, you're a, you're a financial failure, Abraham. Last year, I lost some money. I ain't gonna lie. I lost some money last year. And it hurt. I lost some money last I, I do a little bit of everything. You're like, man, this guy, does, yeah, I do. I do a little bit. Of, why? Because I believe God has given us the capacity. I breed bulldogs. If you didn't know, I breed bulldogs. Yeah, I have, I have, I have eight puppies right now. And I have them at a Whopper. You know how much money I'm going to make off those eight puppies? $30,000. Eight puppies. We'll make $30,000. I've been so much of a believer that I even got Pastor Danny from Mesa to pitch in with me. He's an investor. And me and him are going to split that. It's crazy. Like, why? Because I'm dreaming big. I don't have to do all the bulldog stuff. I can stay away from all that stuff and just live. I said, no, 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 no. I was able to give my mom three dogs. 
And you're like, well, it's just dogs. Well, she's going to make $45,000 off those dogs. That's what she's going to do. Why? So she won't have to get, go get a nine to five. And it may be a small blessing, but she'll make $45,000 off dogs. But it came from me as a blessing. Why? Because I want my parents to be taken care of. See, I, I want you to get thinking. I want you to start thinking, what can you do to put yourself in a position to be better? I don't know about you, but I have a lot of crazy ideas. And my wife thinks I'm crazy sometimes. She's like, I'm just, I'm just on this ride with you. You know what I told her when, she, when we first started dating? Because I didn't have much. When we started dating, I ain't going to lie to you. I didn't have, I pretty had a car, you know, clean record. <laughs> yeah, so, but that's all I got. I got offer you a car and I don't have tickets here. That's all I got. <laughs> I don't have a lot of money. But you know what I told her? You know, I think the line that I, I mean, her like, oh, okay, that's the line we share. I told her, you're with me when I had nothing and you'll be with me when I have everything. I told her that on a, it, was, it was a smooth moment too. <laughs> we're at Rustler's Roots there in South Phoenix. Nice restaurant. We're sitting outside. I said, girl, see all this land? Nah. <laughs> I just told her, I go, you know what? You believed in me when I had nothing. And you'll be with me when we have everything. Just, be, just go on this journey with me. She said, of course. So she lets me do all these things. And some work, some don't. I'm not the most successful businessman, but I do have some success. But you know what's crazy? Is I'm able to do this all with ministry. We're able to help pastor a beautiful church. Help raise up wonderful disciples. So it can be done. You can do business and ministry. You can be a blessing to both. You don't have to choose. Because choosing is separating the two when they two work together. You see, I believe God's going to raise up a wealthy church here in, in Hawaii. How many can say amen? Come on, if you believe that, you got to clap your hands. Come on, if you believe that, you got to shout. Come on, if you believe, if, you, if I'm talking about you, some of you got to make some noise. Come on, if I woke up your dreams, some of you got to stand. Some of you got to lift your hands. Some of you got to give them praise. I'm talking to your blessing. I'm talking to your faith. I, I'm talking to your situation. Close your eyes. Say with me, dream big. Come on, say it louder. Say dream big. Come on, say it the loudest you can. Say dream big. Start small. Come on, say dream big. Come on, say start small. Come on, say it a little louder. Say dream big. Come on, start small. God, I pray, God, that you give them a starting place. Many of them have callings here. All of them have callings here. To what? I may not know. But many in here, God, are called to the ministry. Many in here are called to do businesses. Many in here are called to be examples of spending and saving. Many here, God, are called to, to climb up the ranks in their jobs. To not just being an employee, but to being a boss. Many here, God, are called, God, to be investors. God, shape our minds, God. Give us wisdom. The Bible declares that if we ask for wisdom, God, you would open up heaven for us to receive wisdom. I pray wisdom over this church. I, I, I pray, God, the, the fight, God, to see something completed to be placed inside of us. I pray, God, that you do a deep work, God, that our dreams will never die, but we keep dreaming. Even if we fail in some areas, like I have, we'll get up and we'll dream again. I pray dreams are released from the front to the back, left to the right. I pray, God, dreams, God, are embedded within our hearts. Dreams, Father, of not doing drugs. Dreams of being a pastor. Dreams of winning this island and many islands beyond. Dreams of writing music. Dreams of getting out of debt. Dreams of owning the first home dreams of, uh, of being a blessing I pray God it says that you'll open up the windows of heaven for our lives open up the windows of heaven for this amazing church raise up people that will surround Pastor Tony God Sister Vero that will be a blessing to their life that have their heart to dream if you have a dream here this morning or you're in search for a dream I want you to lift your hands at me just lift your hands at me lift your hands at me lift your hands at me Dream big, start small. Dream big, start small. 
If you want to solidify that dream here this morning, I want you to come on your way down to this altar. Let's have a moment of prayer together. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus.